Welcome to the Horror Next Door. We're back with some of our favorite new horror movie trailers for January 2020. If you like everything horror, horror movies, memorabilia, and masks, please subscribe. Now, on with the trailers. The Lodge. A soon-to-be stepmom is snowed in with her fiancé's two children at a remote holiday village. Just as relations begin to thaw between the trio, some strange and frightening events take place. This is apparently the second trailer for the film, but we didn't see or talk about this movie when the first trailer came out, so we're going to talk about it now. The movie is directed by Severin Fiala and Veronica Franz, who both together wrote and directed The Strange But Good Goodnight Mommy. It stars Jaden Martell from the new It, and also stars Alicia Silverstone, which is very surprising because you don't usually see her in many horror films if any. I think that of all the trailers we have this month, I'm the most excited about this movie. The whole idea of cults and the effects that they could have on a person is so eerily fascinating, and it seems as though it was cast very well. I also get the feeling that the build-up to Grace letting loose is going to be well done, and it will be able to hold my interest. The trailer looks very haunting. I love the atmosphere the trailer depicts, the snowy setting, and the apparent dread that surrounds the house. It looks like it might be a slow burn style of film, but hopefully a slow burn that pays off. Looking forward to seeing this one. Disappearance at Clifton Hill follows a troubled young woman returning to her hometown of Niagara Falls, where the memory of a long-ago kidnapping quickly ensnares her. The movie stars Hannah Grace from Mindhunter and also David Cronenberg in an acting role. I've only ever seen him act in Jason X. It's intriguing that she encountered the missing person at such a young age and is dealing with it so many years later. There are some flashes of some wild looking stuff. The fact that Cronenberg is in it probably means there will be some strange surprises. Everything he touches has to be at least a little bit bizarre. The cinematography looks great, too. The beginning of the trailer reminds me of a David Fincher film, just the color style and tone. It reminded me of the look from Mindhunter or Zodiac, but the later portion of the trailer just gets weird. Yes, Cronenberg weirdness. But these are all good things. Senzaru. As dementia engulfs her employer, a fragile home health aide begins to question her own sanity. There are so many different things going on in this trailer. (laughs) Is there a supernatural presence, something demonic, some kind of witchcraft, or just weird people doing weird shiz? (laughs) It makes me want to see more, just to know what's going on. I almost wrote this one off quickly, but as the trailer went on, it just got more and more strange. I couldn't turn it off. The trailer reminded me of some of the Japanese movies Hellcat shows me. Like, what is going on? (laughs) There's a cow in the house, there's a bird flying around, the old woman is odd and off-putting. It's just strange. Also, I love the title card at the end of the trailer. It's very old school, 70s or 80s-esque. Uncaged. A zoo veterinarian gets caught up in a grisly adventure as she finds herself leading the citywide hunt for a monstrous lion terrorizing the Dutch capital of Amsterdam. So upon researching, this movie was released in the Netherlands under the title Prey back in 2016 and is now getting a U.S. release under the title Uncaged, which sounds a lot like 80s Italian horror movies. This looks ridiculous, but the comedic angle they're putting on it makes it seem like a fun watch. I hate seeing animals get harmed, though, so I kind of just hope that the lion takes a lot of people out. (laughs) I agree that the movie looks ridiculous as well, but it looks fun. Something that can hold your attention for its entire runtime. It's a cliche, monster-on-the-loose story, but the film appears self-aware, having fun with the idea with its comedic elements. Hopefully this movie brings the gore during the more serious moments and doesn't shy away. May the Devil Take You Chapter 2 Two years after escaping from demonic terror, Alfie and Nara try to continue their lives but Alfie is still haunted by feelings of guilt and unnatural visions, and her worst nightmare has just begun, as the dangers that await her are increasingly threatening. 
This is an Indonesian film. It's directed by the same guy that did the Safe Haven segment in VHS 2, and he also directed Headshot and The Night Comes for Us. There are lots of quick cuts of some pretty disturbing images. The typical horror fan probably can't help but want to know more. I just hope that this isn't a generic possession movie. However, at the very least, I can say that shot towards the end where the girl's hand is making devil horns and turning black is not something I've seen before. We both have never seen the first May the Devil Take You, but now I kind of want to go watch it. The shot of the weird woman slamming the girl's head down towards the end of the trailer reminded me of the mother character from Resident Evil 7 when you fight her in the house. Demonic possession movies are usually hit or miss for me, but this movie looks cool. The craziness at the end reminds me of the Evil Dead, just very intense and graphic, no punches pulled. Sadistic Intentions A psychotic musician lures a fellow bandmate and an unsuspecting woman to a remote mansion for a night of romantic deceit and grinding metal mayhem. I love movies that have metal music infused with them in some way, movies like Deathgasm or The Devil's Candy. The main guy in this film says that his band name is Morbid Annihilator. I love it. But is he crazy too? Did he help lure this woman here? Or are they both being lured here? So many questions. This one is on our watch list for sure. This looks like a movie that starts off slow and mellow and then suddenly goes batshit crazy. Plain and simple, it just looks enjoyable to me. And has good metal music. A Quiet Place Part 2 Following the events at home, the Abbott family now face the terrors of the outside world. Forced to venture into the unknown, they realize the creatures that hunt by sound are not the only threats lurking beyond the sand path. John Krasinski returns to co-write and direct. Emily Blunt, Millicent Simmons, and Noah Jube also return. Killian Murphy joins the cast this time around. The flashback to when this family first encountered the aliens is cool. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I liked the first movie more than I thought I would, and hope the same for the sequel, because I'm not too excited about it, to be honest. It looks to be at the point in the story where things have been this way long enough that only the strongest and or smartest people have survived, and now the humans have each other to worry about just as much, if not more than, the creatures. This has been done lots of times, namely in The Walking Dead. Repeatedly. <laughs> I'm more interested in the aliens than the people. I, for one, love the original A Quiet Place. I thought it was great. Sometimes I feel that movies don't need sequels, though, like how they're making a sequel to Don't Breathe, but that's a different topic. Hopefully the story of this one pays off in a way that it doesn't lessen the first film. A Quiet Place Part 2 appears that it will show us at least some of the early days of the crisis when the aliens appeared in our world. But will it answer where the aliens came from? How or why? I'm all for keeping things vague, but they have to give us at least a little hint of info on the aliens. Something to make the audience go, ooh. Oh. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to leave a comment with your thoughts on any of these trailers below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe to The Horror Next Door. Until next time.